Good evening, Hugh, from the UK. Uh, this is the Alliance of Independent Authors Beginner Self-Publishing Advice and Inspirations podcast. I am Allies Marketing Manager, Dan Parsons, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Melissa Addy. I'm Allies Campaigns Manager. And today we are going to be talking about uh, mailing lists. So lots of different things, you know, the, the how, why, what, when, if... All the different questions to do with mailing lists and a little bit about reader magnets and sort of how it all connects together. Um, but first, we're going to be talking a little bit about what we've done recently. So, um, you know, it was another big week or a big month, rather, for Alan. Um, we both met each other, didn't we, at the uh, London Book Fair this year? And we you got up to quite a lot. <laughs> so at the London Book Fair, um, we were presenting uh, the outcome of our indie author income survey, um, which was super exciting <clears throat> excuse me clearly haven't been speaking enough um <laughs> uh, uh, so i was uh got to do a presentation uh to uh show off what had come out of our survey which was really exciting the big story was that uh we found out that self-published authors earn more than those who are traditionally published and this was a fascinating thing for us to find and not only that but their income is rising a great deal over time as compared to the standard surveys that we've seen, which include uh, mostly authors from traditionally published backgrounds, where not only is uh, their income lower, but it's dropping quite substantially over time. So that was a fascinating thing for us to uh, find. I'm not going to go into all of it now, but head over to our website because we have posted it pretty much everywhere. <laughs> There's a whole blog post on it, which you can find. Um, it's also on our main website. It's on our campaigns page. Um, so pop over there and have a look. It, you can download the whole report and read it. It's really interesting uh, for a quick Yeah. Look. As you said, we won't go into all of it right now because that would be a podcast episode in and of itself. Um, but it is an interesting read and there's um, there's lots of information in there. Um, and some of it we haven't even explored yet because, you yep. know, other things coming down the pipeline. That I'm all very excited. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. As of today, we are going to be sticking with the basics. We're going to be talking about mailing lists. Um, so in marketing, there are lots of different options that authors use. You've probably, if you've been in the author sphere for a while, listening to podcasts and probably binging information that you don't quite need yet because we all do this years ahead of when we actually need it. Um, you'll know that there are Facebook ads, Amazon ads, BookBub, there's um, you know content marketing and all these different things. Um, but ultimately, the number one strategy for many authors in terms of return on investment, if you're going to be marketing, is to build a mailing list. Now, today, as I've mentioned, we're going to be going into the, the, the nuts and bolts of building a mailing list and some um, different tools and things that you can use uh, along the way just to help you progress a little bit faster and do it cheaply to the point where you're able to make money through selling books without it you know, costing a bomb. Um, so, yeah, that is what we're going to be talking about today. Cool. We have a comment here. Someone <laughs> says that we may be having some issues with sound quality. Oh, no. Um, okay. So I'm going to see if I can turn up my microphone. Okay. I will try and do the same with mine. Let's see. And Let's see. Then we'll see how this goes. Dangerously it's, high. <laughs> it's fun to do this live. It's my favorite It is. Thing. It's so fun. So uh, does, does that sound better? Do we think we sound better now? They can give us live feedback so that we can fix this. Yeah, problem. we've both turned up our volumes. <laughs> so now it's super loud. Microphone's definitely on. Yeah. We'll crack on regardless. We'll crack on and we'll see how we go. We'll try um, our best. We will. So, okay. So yeah, think, Melissa, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what a mailing list is um, and also how you go about, uh, you know, sort of putting the pieces together to create one? Yeah. So the first thing to think about is just like we said to you, you need your own website because it's your part of the Internet. And no one can take it away from you. And if you're relying on someone's social media platform as your website, they can take that away from you. So you need your own website. And then, of course, what you'll be thinking is, but what happens to all the followers that I would have had on social media? And we're going to transform those onto your mailing list. Your mailing list is essentially your followers, as they might be on a social media platform. But with the with the much improved situation, which is you can contact them directly. You are not uh, you are not beholden to an algorithm to decide whether or not 
your information to them might or might not get shown on a social media platform, if they're on your mailing list, you get to put an email into their inbox. And this is much more direct communication. You can be more certain that they've received it. If they're not receiving it or not opening it, you can take them off your mailing list because they're no use to you anymore. Um, so it's a much clearer, more straightforward, more direct way of, of contacting your best customers. Also, it means that in terms of algorithms, you're not going to be throttled if you use certain keywords that are within keeping of your brand. Um, say, for example, you write uh, political thrillers or something like that. If you use words like politics or political based words, you're then not going to be um, throttled with the amount of readers that you can reach because those rules don't necessarily apply. There are other rules, but those rules don't apply um, when it comes to sending emails. So people on your mailing list will still get the information when they may not get it elsewhere. Indeed. You are not going to have a mailing list in terms of the way you're thinking of you do emails normally. So they're not on your contacts list and then you're going to send an email with thousands of people on it. That's not how it's going to work. You're going to have a mailing list provider the mailing list provider will be something like MailChimp, MailerLite, ConvertKit. There are a few different ones. These are some of the common popular ones that are used. And that mailing list provider, they're going to hold the email addresses for you. They will make sure it complies with all the GDPR because um, you're not holding it. You're not looking after it. Um, they're looking after it correctly for you. And the emails are being sent through them. And, and your newsletters, which is the common thing you would send, will be sent through them. So it's not coming from your Hotmail account or whatever. Yeah. Um, You're not so going to be CCing a thousand readers into an email and they're not right. going to see each be, other's email addresses. Which would be terrible. That would be a terrible thing to do, yeah. So <laughs> this is a, is a much more professional, clear-cut way of doing it. Also, that mailing list provider um, will provide you with a nice link that you're putting on to your website where people can sign up to join that mailing list. So it's not like they're writing to you and go, please, can you put me on there? They will just click a button, add their email address, and they will get put onto the list uh, directly. So it's a very professional, slick operation once you've set it all up. Yeah. And obviously, this is part of your author website. So um, at Ally, we recommend that authors have a website if they want to uh, write books and publish professionally. Um, because your website will be the hub of your online activity. And if you think of all social media channels and things like that, they will all be spokes coming off this central hub, which is your website. Um, and ideally, you'd like to be directing people into your website so that, A, they can buy books from you directly, if that's something that you want to do with your business model. Uh, and B, while they're there, very, very importantly, they can subscribe to your email list via a landing page on your homepage. So Absolutely. As Melissa just explained, it can all be done very, very slick in, in a way that everything connects together. All readers will see is a little box on your on your homepage uh, or anywhere else on your website that says, you know, join my mailing list for, and we'll get on to some freebies and things you can give away uh, a bit later, and then they will be on your mailing list and you can directly contact them. Yep. Now, we've talked a little bit about the what and the why. Um, we'd probably better go on to the, the how. You know, how do you go about gaining subscribers once you've started because it's all very well and good saying oh well I've got a sign up form on my website um where are my 10,000 subscribers where have they come from <laughs> yeah so I, I do occasionally go onto people's uh sites and it will say join our mailing list and I think why because <laughs> I can just come and visit your website anytime I like well why would I specifically give you my email address unless I'm quite certain you're going to send me something interesting in return. Where's the, where's the give and take? Um, yeah. So uh, the, the most common thing that, that, that is used in this situation by authors is what's referred to as a reader magnet. And this means that you are going to give something of value to the reader in return for their email address. It's kind of a transaction going on. So you're going to give them something nice. This is usually some form of a book, a set of stories, uh, a, a chapter from something, a workbook, who knows what it is, something linked into your writing that is a value to them. And they in return are going to give you the email address. They know when they're giving you the email address, A, because you're going to tell them for a GDPR compliance, so you're going to say you will be receiving my newsletter. But B, 
everybody knows instinctively that what you're then going to do is keep in touch with them. And they're okay with that because they see value in that transaction between you. And that's why your arena magnet needs to be quite a tempting thing. It cannot just be something that you've sort of flung together that isn't really of much interest. What you want is something that tempts in the right kind of reader for you, because then what you've got on your list is a group of people who liked that thing, who liked something about your writing. Um, yeah. Because then what you essentially have is a list of warm customers who like to hear from you and you need not fear that you are kind of cold calling them when you contact them. You are, in yeah. fact, telling them something they would like to know. So just like if you think about your your most favorite author, if they sent you a note and said, my new book is out, you would be very pleased to hear that information. Yeah. So once you've got a reader magnet up and running, um, the reader magnet, um, in most cases, will be uh, an ebook um, because that's the easiest thing to to deliver to people uh, free of charge of the author. And that's what makes it economically viable for us authors generally. Um, but once you've got that reader magnet in place, uh, you've got to drive some traffic there. Um, and one of the easiest ways that lots of authors can do it is if you do a little bit of networking, like we've been doing recently at the London Book Fair, um, you can meet other like-minded authors who all may have, say you've got 100 email subscribers and somebody else has got 100 email subscribers and you both write very similar books that you think both readers will enjoy. You can email your own readers to recommend the other author and they will do it the same as you. This is not sharing email addresses. You're not no. giving anyone email addresses, but you are recommending another author if you think their books are good and similar to yours, uh, and they will do the same. And then some of their subscribers will come to you voluntarily, and some of your subscribers will go to them voluntarily in order to get another reader magnet. Um, but, you know, that's not the only method of building a, a mailing list, is it, Melissa? Yep. There are also other ways. Um, and bear, bear in mind that what we just described there is called a newsletter swap. So if someone ever says, do you want to do a newsletter swap? You are not. They're not going to take over your newsletter. They will share info about you. You will share info about them. That's that's kind of what they mean when they say that. Um, so then there are other things that you can do. So you can have your own reader magnet and you're building your own mailing list especially at the beginning, um, you may want to take uh, advantage of kind of, if you like, professional newsletters is how I tend to describe them. In other words, these are organizations who have already set up um, very large lists. So we're talking hundreds of thousands of subscribers um, in different genre categories, and they will mention you in their newsletter. So you are paying for the privilege of that rather than just swapping with another author because they have very large lists. And that can help you build your list a lot faster, especially in the early days when you don't have so much of a list yourself. Um, yeah. And these are ones like uh, Prolific Works, Book Sweeps, uh, Free Booksy, Fussy Librarian. These are some of the ones. Ask around, ask who's been using what and what they think is good. But these are some of the, the, the most common ones um, that we've enjoyed using. Um, and what you'll get there is you will usually set your book to free or say 99p, 99 cents, that kind of thing. Um, and what you'll get there is a big uptick in uh, people downloading your book, reading it. And what you're getting there is you, hopefully some nice new reviews, which is always good, but also you should get read through. So we'll talk about when you've got multiple books, that's a good thing to have. Um, and you will also get new readers. These are new people discovering you and it's quite possible that they'll then come over to your website, check you out and pick up your reader magnet and join your own list. Yeah, so, um, you know, those are the, the very basic uh, sort of ground level ways of building a mailing list. Um, there's a slightly more advanced one that we're not going to go into the nuts and bolts of today just because that's, a, a, that's an entire course on its own. Um, but some authors do also run paid Facebook ads because what you're doing then is you're sort of heading into new frontiers. So rather than getting, uh, you know, shared email subscribers, essentially, that have come from another author or come from one of these professional services, you are going on Facebook and you're finding average people who are not subscribed to other authors mailing lists. And you're, you know, showing them, I've got this thing that you can see on Facebook. You can click through the ad on Facebook and then they will sign up on your mailing list on your website. Um, so there are authors that do that. Um, that generally, long term, is uh, a lot more expensive per subscriber. But those subscri subscribers are then not getting lots and lots of newsletters from different authors. 
Um, so generally, they're a little bit easier to get interactions and things from because they're not swamped by lots of authors. So if that is the route you want to go down, you may pay a little bit more per subscriber, but then you may get uh, you know more interactions and they'll be more loyal and dedicated to you rather than having been on 30 different emails, you know, email lists from different authors. Um, it's just a different business. Uh, you know, business model. It doesn't really matter which way you go down. You can be successful with both. Um, it's just good to know that you've got those two options there when you're when you're doing this. Yeah, um, it's yeah. probably best in, when you're a very when you're a very beginner when, when you're right at the start <laughs> to keep your costs as low as possible because you won't have a lot of books to get the read through from. So things like Facebook adverts generally work best when you have a, a run of books that a reader can work their way through. But it's worth bearing those in mind for when you're continuing to build your mailing list, because your mailing list you will build all the way through from when you're a total beginner and onwards forever, forever and ever you will be building your mailing list. So yes. you can just raise the level of what brings traffic into your mailing list as you go along. Yeah, a mailing list, um, as you can probably imagine from this uh, conversation, isn't something that stays um, consistent forever. So you've got uh, people join in your mailing lists and, you know, some days your mailing list number will go up and then other days it might come down depending on, you know, if some people are unsubscribed because you've sent out a newsletter and they've decided they no longer want your, your newsletter. And some people become inactive just because they've burnt out with too many emails or, you know, lots of things happen to people and they don't look at their emails anymore. So, you know, there's there's lots of things that can go on. But what you should consider is um, a way to keep them more engaged for longer and to keep most of those readers around is to create something called uh, a newsletter sequence or an automation sequence. And what this is, is a list, uh, is essentially a, a, a run of different emails. So when people sign up to your mailing list, they get the first email, which um, I like to think of as a whitelist email. So this is just you telling them, you know, congratulations, you've joined the list, you've got access to news and stuff. Uh, would you like to whitelist me just by saying I am not spam? And that's essentially a good way to start and maybe get them to say all done as a reply to your email, because that way they will uh, be more likely to see your emails in the future. Um, and after that, literally five minutes later, you can give them the reader magnet. Um, so, yeah, that's a way to sort of get them on board. Um, and how would you deliver that reader magnet, Melissa? So the best way um, that's most commonly used is a service called Book Funnel. It's such a good service. I've never had trouble with it all the years. <laughs> I don't think anyone else has. They're just, they're just so good. Um, so essentially, Book Funnel will um, hold your uh, the, the file of your reader magnet, your ebook. It will hold that there. Um, and all, and it will just give you a very simple link where uh, your reader can go and collect it. So when you set up your um, your mailing list, it will say when this email arrives at the mailing list provider, you are to trigger off this other email I've written, which will go back to them and say, hi, great to have you on board, whiteboard me, and then um, whitelist me, and then it will say, here is the link, pop over to BookFunnel and download your book. And so that sequence happens automatically without you doing anything about it once it's all set up. Yeah. And they just go over to Book Funnel and it will say what format you want it in. And then it will talk them through how to download it if they've never done that before. So they take care of all the tech. They get take care of anyone who goes, I yeah. don't really understand how to do the blah. They take care of that. It's a joy. This process may sound complicated if you're completely new to it, but once you understand the basics, you may have to write it down on a piece of paper just to see in like a bubble and you know what connects to what. Uh, but your website connects to your mailing list provider and your mailing list provider sends out these automated emails. And one of these emails has a link to your reader magnet, which is, is delivered by BookFunnel. So it's pretty simple once you get into it. And what it does is it will save you hours and hours and hours of time every week where you would normally be seeing people join your mailing list and then physically emailing them files, which is horrific and nobody yeah. ever wants to do it. <laughs> and then also having to do tech support when they can't get it onto their Kindle or reading device. And no. nobody wants to do that. So <laughs> we don't want this, to do that. <laughs> no, this setup will make sure it does it automatically for you so that all you see is new subscribers have joined your mailing list and Absolutely. then you can carry on with your life. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, it, I yes, you will sit there for a couple of days and scratch your head and go, I don't understand. Where's the link? What's the something? Have I done it right? Run endless test messages. I apologize to my husband for endlessly signing him up to my mailing list and then unsigning him and then re-signing him to see if things worked. 
Um, <laughs> but when you've done all that, uh, like Dan says, you will then hardly ever think about it ever again. It will just automatically, gently carry on doing its thing, signing people up, giving them their lovely reader magnet, and then you can just contact them yeah. when you feel like it. Now, that's the techie bit. The fun, creative bit that you're probably going to be more interested in is what can I give away as a reader magnet? You know, a book takes a long time. Not for some people, I know, weirdly, but, <laughs> but it does but take a long time I for me. Does. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it may take me six to nine months. Some people do it in six to nine days. Those people are insane, but yeah. they're very <laughs> impressive. Um, <laughs> we take our hats off to the insane people. Yeah. Um, so it, it's really depressing when you've written one book to be told, why didn't you give a book away for free? And you just think, I, you are joking. It's taken me years to do this and get to this point. However, I got to that point, I had one novel and then I read all this stuff about reader magnets and I just thought, this is, I'm not giving away a whole book. That's crazy. Also, I only have one book, so that's no good. So I thought I will write a novella. So my books are kind of 80 to 100,000 words. I wrote a novella that was 30,000 words. Um, so like a mini novel. Um, and I put that and I cannot tell you, I thought, first of all, I thought it was just for the mailing list. So I thought I'm going to put that on. And it will help me build a mailing list, which it has for many years. And I'm very happy with it. But it also quintupled the sales of the novel. It made such a huge difference. It was massive. And that was the point where I thought, oh, this self-publishing lock, it might work. <laughs> because <laughs> even though it took me probably nine months to write the novella and, and set up the whole system and everything, it then just kind of really took off. And I could see that that was going to work. So a novella is a fantastic idea. Um, perhaps a short story anthology. If you've, if you are someone who's written a lot of short stories over the years, you might put together a little anthology. Um, some people have things like secret photo albums, or they have um, case files and maps. And yeah, uh, I think maps know. are pretty good for fantasy authors. And you know, when it comes to case files, that's more of a, a thriller left the army what did they do in the army that made them a tortured soul sort of thing you know it's a little bit of a, a tidbit background information thing that you would necessarily would necessarily include in your book um but readers of your book would go well why are they you know drinking heavily at 9 a.m um, <laughs> and it's not going to come up in the book um, no. but they will you know they want to know about this previous mission that they were on and you don't have to write about the entire mission you can just give little details and you know pictures of dog tags and all that type of stuff so that you know there's, there's an essence of it which a lot of readers do appreciate yeah and for things like romance um so julia quinn who wrote the bridgerton series she did what she called uh, a little happy ever after afters uh for each character so at the point where they got married and we've kind of married them off hooray she'd then do kind of a little snippet of well but what is that life like afterwards and she put all of those together into one book so again those are just little snippets that the reader who's invested in those characters really would like to know so if that's an yeah. exclusive piece of content on your website only that can be a really special thing for the reader yeah if it's a paid piece of content and it's not exclusively wrapped up with a retailer, um, then you can also use something that's available in the world for sale, but for free as a reader magnet. Um, it just tends to be the fact that exclusive content that people can only get through your mailing list works better to convert uh, browsers on your website into email subscribers. Because um, if they know they can't pay for it elsewhere, they're going to have to sign up to your mailing list to get it. And when they're binging your content and that's the only thing left, they're going, I've got to get it. That last bit. <laughs> Can't um, bear not having it. Yeah. So what you've got to think of when you're creating uh, reader magnets is, you know, what are my readers going to want and what mindset are they going to be in? Um, you know, what part of the reader journey are they going to be in when they come to my website? So you may want to write a short story that comes after your first book or one that comes before, depending on how your story is set up. Um, or you may even want to give them the first book in another series if you've got, you know, two different series on the go, which, you know, if you're a beginner, probably not. But this is one of those things that eventually you get to think about. Um, so you should really think about your uh, your strategy um, and then what most people 
tend to go on to do authors when they become quite prolific is they'll say I have a starter library um, and this is really good for warming up readers because you can drip feed a few books in the automation sequence where they get a little link every single email for a few days or weeks um, and they get different bits of information and free content pieces um, which is quite nice. Um, and also I should mention for non-fiction there's a couple of things that work really well. One can be like a chapter from the book, something that's that you've sort of pulled out of that book, but that could be a little standalone piece. And the other thing can be things like workbooks or something that goes with the main book. So that works really well where you go, now that you've bought this, come over to my website and I've got the free thing, the companion item that goes with it. And that you can just make something simple and nice yourself so you can use something like canva and just make a lovely little journal that goes with your self-help book or those sorts of things and that's the kind of nice extra piece that people like to come over to your website for yeah i quite like the um, the idea that one author has just sent us through as a, as a comment um that you can create a reader magnet that is starring a supporting character that's quite popular in your main series because obviously people want that bit of yes. a, a character there. Often I find, and I've done exactly the same thing, but the, the other way around where, you know, it, that they got their own book series. But sometimes that supporting character is great in small doses. So a novella that you give away is a really good idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there, there are lots and lots of ideas and you can get really creative. As we've said, there are some authors that have done secret photo albums based on locations in their book and they've visited the area of, you know, and done all that sort of stuff. Um, what you should also consider um, is segmenting your list. Now, Melissa, would you like to enlighten us on what that means? Pop yep. quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Pop quiz. Boom. Uh, so segmenting your list is so that you can take, rather than just have this big amorphous blob of readers, which is good to start with, but you can then divide them down more than that. You can, for example, if you have multiple pen names, you can have multiple lists for those. If you have multiple series, you could have lists for those because now you know which series they started with and then you can kind of guide them into other series and things like that. You can segment them by a whole load of different things. You could segment them by location and then you could write to them when there were particular promotions going on in certain places. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different ways of splitting up that bigger audience into different lists so that you can yeah. then contact them in a way that is best for them and set up different sequences of information and emails to them that will fit them best. Yeah. Um, just to give a, a concrete example of that. So I've got two fantasy, I've got two different areas, even of the same pen name, I just work into two different genres. Some of them are sort of fluffy, nice fantasy books and some of them people are getting murdered by zombies. So those two reader types don't necessarily want all of those books. So if I've got, uh, you know, an update that I want to send out to them about some sort of zombie news, I'll just send it to the zombie people and then the fantasy people get fantasy stuff. If there's something where I've got loads of news, I'll send it to both of them. But at least the content is kept more relevant to them more often, which keeps them engaged. Because if somebody is, is reading zombie stuff through me and then they get five newsletters in a row that are all about fluffy fantasy stuff, they're going to stop reading my emails. Yeah. So it's a good way just to, you know, keep them engaged long term. It is. Um, it is. Which it is. actually brings us on to the, the idea of sending regular emails once you've got them onboarded and everyone's warmed up. Um, so what is your approach, Melissa? And then what is the best practices? I suspect they're exactly the same because you do <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, I only send a newsletter once a month and that's because... <laughs> having signed up to quite a lot of authors' newsletters, to, which I recommend, by the way, sign up to lots of authors' newsletters, have a little look at what they do. You can always unsubscribe again. They won't be offended. They're not personally monitoring it. I am, but no one else is. Um, <laughs> but not really. You just sign up and see what they do. See what it's like. See what it's like to be on the other side. Um, so I send them once a month because I find anything more than that a bit much for me. And uh, I think even my most favorite authors, if they were writing to me every week, I think that that would get too much for me. And I have had a few readers say, oh, I'm glad you only write once a month. So, but then again, bear in mind that I write slow, right? So I, there's a limit to how much new material I can send you. Yeah. If I was someone who was putting out a book a month, 
clearly I think I'd be writing to you a little bit more than a book a month, you know, one newsletter a month. So I write once a month. And uh, very early on, I decided I had to have a formula because I thought otherwise, every month I'm going to sit there and think, oh, what should I write? What, what should I say? What should I something? And in the end, I thought, no, I need a formula so that I have to think this through every month. So my formula is uh, something nice for the reader. So this will often be where I'll mention another author. So I'll go so-and-so, that's their reader magnet, or they've got a promotion on, you'd really like their stuff, da da um, or it might be I've got a new audio book out and I have free codes for it. Um, so those sorts of things. So something nice for them, something nice about me. So that's where I'll say this is what I've been doing behind the scenes. I've been writing. Here's a new book cover. Here's the actual new book. That's a bit more of a ooh, big thing about that. Yeah. Um, but generally, you know, things that are going on in my writing life. And then the third thing is something nice from, from the world around us because I really hate negative news media. So uh, I get really annoyed with that. So I put something a bit more positive. So that's my formula. That makes it incredibly easy once a month to sit down and go, right, I need a thing for that, a thing for that, a thing for that, rather than every time trying to figure out what I was going to say. Um, yeah. That that makes life a bit easier. Um, people love behind the scenes stuff. They love it more than anything. Um, I can't even remember if I showed you this, but you know, like I love putting together beautiful book trailers and putting loads of effort into it and all lovely. And then one day I posted that. That's my scruffy bit of stuff on the wall that is my word count that I cross stuff off. And everybody <laughs> went berserk. And I like, well, what am I doing all the effort for on the other stuff? And if they just wanted to see my scruffy little bits of well, stuff the thing, stuck yeah, on the wall. Lots of readers are also writers. And if they see your word count of how many words you're writing every day, they, that's going to be exciting to them because they see a little insight into your process. And even if they're not writers, they just want to know how quickly can you be banging these out and you're not doing it? <laughs> I know. They're like, how come there's only 4,000 words? What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just found that really interesting that they do like those sort of behind the scenes things. Now you can choose how much you want to share that's personal to you or, you know, whether you want to show your cats and your kids and your life and your whatever, you can pick yeah. whichever bits you want. What, but what I will say love is behind the scenes. Yeah, what I will say is that um, don't be worried about sharing too much with readers. Obviously, you don't want to share anything dangerous, um, but readers don't have a TMI button. They're not going to say, you know, I didn't want to know that because generally these are people that are signed <laughs> up to your mailing list and they want to know things about you. So there are lots of authors, and what I mean by this specifically is authors who are worried about sending email newsletters at all. Yeah, you you can't really, uh, you know, oversend, you know, to a certain point, because, you know, if it's one or two or maybe three newsletters a month, most people can tolerate that. And, you know, it's fine. Um, but it just, just depends on what the content is in those newsletters. That is what you should be careful about, because, you know, they will accept as much information as you can give them. <laughs> But the fun thing in the newsletters is you can put you on a research trip, uh, a picture of what you thought the character looked like, uh, sneak peeks of covers, cover reveals, sneak, yeah. um, you know, if you've just started writing, here's the first line, this is what's going to open the next book. There's loads of things that you can put in there that are related to what you're writing about if you do historical fiction like i do i can put up historical artifacts and go look here's a, yeah. you know here's his this is what the shoes looked like this is what the jewelry looked like um and all of those things people really enjoy them you you can even recommend other authors books now this is a thing that um it seems counterintuitive because you know if you're new you may see your newsletter as a sales tool but you know you may not always have a book out and you know the readers still want to read some books you can recommend other books in your genre now this is a slightly advanced tip really but if you're recommending other books like yours um if nothing else you're actually training retailer algorithms to associate your readers with the readers of other books that are similar to yours so even though you're recommending other people's books that's going to come round to you because those algorithms on retailers will then promote your books to readers like them yeah. So, you know, you can't really go wrong with, you know, and if that sounds books if they're good. Yeah, exactly. And if that sounds fancy and techy way of putting it, just remember that, for example, if you get someone to keep reading 
around the topic that you write in, even if it's someone else's, you're keeping them in that area for when your book comes out. You're not letting them wander off and read some other genre, some other thing. You're keeping them focused and interested in your zone of genius, if you like to call it that. <laughs> your zone of genius, great. Um, <laughs> and in terms of, you know, little um, pro tips, once you've got into, you know, you've got post past the automation sequence and you're sending regular emails, you don't necessarily have to be doing a hard sell. As you said, you can just be sharing some information about research and things like that. But it does help if you've got a strong email signature. Yes. Now, that email signature could be branded. Now, I believe yours is branded, isn't it, Melissa? It is. So just you can set this up in whatever your email provider is. You can just set up, go have a look at the signature bit and see how you can adjust it. Because think about every time you send an email, if you email the dentist to go, when's my next appointment? For all you know, the dentist receptionist is really interested in your genre or they can mention it to someone and they'll be excited that they've got an author on their books and they'll be like, oh, and then they'll go and explore. So what you can have is your name. You can have in there images of the books themselves. You can have a link through to your website. You can have a link through to the, whichever site is selling the books. Um, make it really easy for someone to just explore your books because you got... don't know who's seeing that email. No, I've got the reading order for my books at the bottom of my newsletters. So I may be telling them about some, you know, strange, obscure plant that mind controls ants in the rainforest, because that is a genuine inspiration for zombie stuff. Um, but then in the bottom of the newsletter, I've just got, these are all of the books that you'd be interested in under this genre umbrella. And they go, oh, I didn't know you'd done that one. I'll go in and read that. And I haven't even asked them to do it. It's just there's a link at the bottom with the name of the book and they go and check it out. So that can sometimes help uh, quite a lot. So you don't have to do a hard sell every time. Now, I think that concludes everything unless you have some extra ninja tips. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we're going to be going on to uh, our further resources, which um, do you have that you can recommend for this month's extra reading? I do. So again, referring to my special sheet so I get things right. So first of all, we did talk about how much you're going to share and, uh, you know, how personal things are and that kind of thing. And it's lovely to share and you can choose the level that is right for you. However, we also would like you to take into account author safety. So there's a little leaflet. Uh, so uh, selfpublishingadvice.org slash bookshop slash author safety. Um, you can also find it on our campaigns page. Uh, so allianceofindependentauthors.org forward slash campaigns. You will find uh, in every single campaigns page the author safety leaflet. It's just a little leaflet. Uh, it just reminds you of a few author safety titbits, if you like. There's just five steps and we really recommend that all authors do them. They're very simple, they're very easy. And we just think it's important to just protect your own personal life. There's, there, there are, yeah. there is a line that we don't want people to cross. So that's that one. Um, choosing the best self-publishing services. So because you'll be going out there trying to find the right services. So, uh, for example, um, which mailing list provider and that kind of thing. Um, so John Doppler's book, selfpublishingadvice.org forward slash choose best services. And the ultimate guide to mailing lists for indie authors. This was a blog post and selfpublishingadvice.org forward slash email marketing for authors part one. So again, yes, you will spend a few days cursing over <laughs> the exact links or <laughs> getting it exactly right and being sure that it works. But I guarantee once you've set it up, you will probably very rarely think about it again and it will just gently keep yeah. bringing in the new readers and building up your mailing list which is a really important marketing thing for always yeah and if anybody mentions it in the future then if you're you know at a talk with another author and they mention things you will instantly understand how it works because you've done it once and it just sticks with you it's a bit like riding a bike creating a mailing list it's that sort of thing where once you've done it you're over the hill and you can just carry on uh, writing books. Um, now, I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. It does. Um, and next month, on the first Tuesday, I believe, next month, we will be discussing writing a series, which, yes. you know, as beginner authors, you will all be very interested to listen about uh, because, you know, it doesn't have to be all on the tech side. We like to talk about tech because we're quite into the world of, you know, author 
businessy things um but generally you know it is all about the writing um, and people who write in long series generally tend to make a career out of you know authorship or they tend to be more likely to make a career out of authorship we have some good stats on that next time essentially we will be looking at at some point we've done a lot of how to do your marketing foundations and now we would like you to kind of stop marketing for a bit -ish <laughs> and write some more books so we're going to go through different ways in which you can get those books going out there so that will be a really cool thing but also because we planned a whole year's worth of of uh, these these sessions and in august september they will come to an end so from now on every month um, we're going to ask you, after we've gone through this sequence, what other topics would beginners like from us so that we can plan next year's podcast for you? So any ideas, we we are very happy to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you can uh, tweet us um, or, you know, message us in whatever social media capacity you feel is is right. And we are there, you know. Um, so on Twitter, I am at DK Parsons Writer. Do you know yours off the top of your head, Melissa? Uh, I think it's just Melissa Addy. <laughs> or, <laughs> Melissa Addy author, possibly. You can also write to me at campaigns at allianceindependentauthors.org. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll both be contactable and we will be going forward with uh, suggestions. So, yeah, um, it is yet another great month of publishing from us and we're looking forward to more in the future. So um, you will see us again next month. Bye, everyone. See you.